Alma of the Airwaves, Lucky of the Orange Couch, Behind Some Wonders. Um, it is the 25th of April, 2022. It's a Monday. And I went shopping to my one and only beautiful store, Curry's um, Art Store. Okay, I always write reviews for these beautiful kids who are so helpful and really so friendly. Today, it was Caroline and Elia who helped me so much. What did I need? Introducing all sorts of golden ink. For the first time ever, I realized that I can buy this uh, actually with two different, oh my God. With ink, there is marble ink, there is all these beautiful pencils, there is all sorts of markers, permanent markers, and I am gonna use them, why? Because remember my olive fairy, which I started a while ago. Okay, that's my golden fairy. Uh, sorry, olive fairy. I then proceeded and made the doodle, which was one night I was sitting and saw so this is her again um, as a Zoom doodle. And then yesterday I got a commission. A dear friend of mine wants to have um, her own olive fairy. But for that, I did, I needed it. So instead of doing something like that, I will make it like this with a pen. Okay. This is like, it brings me back to the 60s in school when we had bottles of um, ink. And this is how we used to write. I love this uh, beyond belief. It's a new start. Okay, but this is going to be so I'll show you uh, show you the result, but it's just so exciting. Never did this. Congratulations. On the philosophy front. I have been a big fan of Martha Beck's work for the longest time. I can prove that to you in two, my award winning book. In 2012, when I wrote this book. So here is a quote here. I quote her. Here it goes on page actually 29. Another big help was Martha Beck's work on the steps to find your life's path. They are four. Step one, get still. Step two, know the truth step three feel your soul's desires step four trust your life to unfold perfectly please read martha beck's books mentioned in the reference section the, she offers invaluable insights proof that she is i was always uh, admiring her work by the way, my bookmark says as follows. Today well, well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. And this is a Sanskrit proverb. And just in passing. So, but what she did all these years, obviously she's been so much, she's done so much wonderful work in the goal attainment in self-improvement, but what she came up uh, with in the pandemic, like I love this woman. I like her sense of humor, I like, so do you know what she came up with? She now teaches us how to become a way finder. Who is a wayfinder? The definition she took from real people who are finding 
the way in the uh, between the Pacific Islands in the ocean. These are people who literally, this is what they do. But of course, it transfers that to our new reality and claims that we all need to become a wayfinder in order not only to survive the pandemic and what it brought, but it, because our world became so unpredictable overnight. She says that people who follow such principles are thriving. Two years ago, when I started my modest um, <clears throat> channel, Alma of the Airwaves, I told you there are people who are thriving in this pandemic because we had to reconsider about anything that's happening in our life. Our world got to a point where it's absolutely unrecognizable. But what she says is, here is uh, what Martha uh, Beck says. What we had before the pandemic was not necessary necessarily the norm. People who had their work skills inherited from the industrial era, people who, who had their time skills, uh, people who had their, um, that they thought they know how to navigate their life, this is all outdated. It's not working anymore. What does she mean? Okay. Let's take the work skills that we have developed. I mean, we're taught what? First of all, she says, forget everything you learned in school. Because how we are brought up and the school system is not working. <laughs> is it? So actually her step one is remember to forget. Every day, just remember to forget things which you thought are working. These work skills were developed for people who work, let's say, in factories. So they go, they punch their time, they go, they work, they have no, they never speak uh, out of turn. They have uh, a, a strong sense of authority and hierarchy. And so they wouldn't dare anything, right? Such work skills are not applicable anymore because you don't need to go anywhere. You don't have to punch anything and you can actually stay and work at home. What she brought up with, with the best example, so the second step is really open your mind and become curious because curiosity is saving our brains. Everybody claims that. Then the, she continues with all her steps, but she gives this beautiful example of, um, she, I think she has four um, definitions. So we people react in four ways. This is what she says. There are four groups of people who react to reality as, number one, group one, preachers. Number two, prosecutors. Number three, politicians. And number four, scientists. Why the first three groups don't work is obvious. Preachers don't want to know anything, but they first they think they're right, no doubt. Um, they couldn't care less about other people's opinions, so they stick, they're very rigid, there is absolutely no flexibility, so they're losers. Prosecutors, people who always find fault in others. They live from really accusing others <clears throat> all the time. Politicians want to please everybody. Politicians want to be liked by everybody, she says. That's really impossible. People pleasing. It's three o'clock. It's three o'clock. Uh, people pleasing, causa perduta, right? Mm, just don't even waste your energy because you cannot possibly please everybody. So that's why politicians are. But then come scientists. And scientists, she is um, describing and, and um, advertising and propagating, not as people who are doing tests in a lab, not necessarily 
doing experiments all day long. But these are people, she says, which who usually are creators. They're creating things. They can um, create art. They can create uh, books, lyrics, music. But these are people who are experimenting like they're trying this and seeing what's the effect. Like they, they are really not against not only feedback, mm -hmm. they beg other people to tell them if in case they don't like what it is, what is wrong with this so that they can improve. Such an open mind to a negative feedback, but uh, feedback is never negative is she, according to her, the only way to feel happy. Because if you're so resistant towards uh, rejection, let's say everybody says, this is so stupid. I mean, I, I never read such a bad novel or I mean, this is a piece of, um, she says, no, they're curious, they're open-minded, they're, they're so much anticipating to hear from other people and see what, what is really going through their minds. Such open-mindedness, such open-heartedness assures that these people live in the present. They are absolutely not concerned with what happened 10 years ago. They couldn't care less about what's gonna happen next week. And she says, in this pandemic, the vertical time, we have horizontal time, like yesterday, last year, uh, tomorrow. But then the vertical time is what we all want, living in the now. Eckhart Tolle, your life is now. So when we learn to be present and live in this one moment, this is when everything is real. And then of course the quote, um, the quote that uh, I totally love, she has a company that works on that, but then she uses this one um, uh, mission sentence from a guru I never heard before, um, an Indian guru, Amrit Desai Gurudev, who have said, I live in perpetual creative response to what, no, to whatever is present. I live in a perpetual creative response to whatever is present. What's in front of me in this vertical moment, this is what I respond to in a creative way. She says, this is the credo of my company. This is what we do. We want to stick to this, um, not only mission, to this way of life, responding to whatever is present and nothing else, not what I wish, not what somebody told me, not something that might. No, what is real? Love her. So that's my uh, heartfelt recommendation. Check out Martha Beck, a wonderful woman. She's born 1962. So she has, uh, she'll be 60 this year. So much to be expected from her. We also um, included a short video from, from the past because it was raining and it's a beautiful day. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be the 26th of April and it's going to be a Tuesday. Okay, today's catch. Okay, in order to produce a new um, olive fairy as a gift, for one of my favorite people in this world, I had to go to Curry's and buy all these golden things. Okay, golden ink, more golden ink. I mean, permanent markers. Um, I finally have a pen to do this, more ink. Oh my God, I'm so excited. It's amazing. Now I'm gonna go and write um, my review for Curry's, best store in the world.